like to call the August 16th, 2022 City Council meeting for the City of Cannon Falls to order. Could we have roll call, please? Bringle. Here. Duncan. Here. Gesme. Here. Cronenberger. Here. Lundell. Here. Montgomery's absent. Altoff. Here. Would you rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, agenda. Any additions or corrections from the council? Hearing none, is there a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Second. Motion by Duncan, a second by Gesme to approve the agenda. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Okay, public input. Public input is intended to afford the public an opportunity to address concerns to the City Council. The public input will not be no longer than 30 minutes in total length and each speaker will have no more than three minutes to speak. Speakers may address topics relative to the governance of the city. Speakers must sign up in advance and must provide their name and address, the topic they intend to address. Comments must be on topic, respectful, pertinent to city business, and adhere to the applicable data privacy rules. Any speaker that violates these rules will be asked to sit down, and if the speaker refuses to comply, they may be removed from the meeting. Speakers shall not address topics that are subject of a public hearing. All such comments will be made at that public hearing. The City Council will not generally act on issues raised by the public input, but may choose to schedule consideration of the item on a future agenda. Okay, first up, Bob McCallum. I got that right. You're up. Good evening. If I um, appear at times to be a bit nervous and talk too quickly, let me know. Um, I'm a new resident to Cannon Falls. I've been here for uh, 15 months. Um, my son is Michael Mascala, who is an NBA player with the Oklahoma City Thunder. Um, and I am the caretaker for his home uh, here in Cannon Falls, and I work my butt off most of the time. Um, he's gone a lot of the time. He's been in rehab uh, for the last four months. It's an interesting situation. I'll try not to belabor this stuff too much because there's some topic items that I want to get to. And I, I, I think I, I said the item was I think stewardship related to the Cannon River. Um, as a resident of Waterville, Minnesota for 35 years, I commuted 130 miles a day, six days a week to my offices in Edina. I was active in politics and active with the city, et cetera, but only spoke uh, publicly four times. So I try to just keep it to things that are most important to me, if you will. And I come to this issue after having had some fairly long conversations and an opportunity to talk to Mr. William Lacefield, who is the owner of Cannon Canoe and Bikes right across the street from you. I've spent approximately two and a half days with him and with his staff and tried to understand the situation that's at hand and would offer the following comments to you. I made an immediate offer on the property uh, but told uh, Mr. Lacefield that it was not a serious offer because I don't have enough money to be able to pay for that place. I'm only worth $450,000 and uh, and this place costs even more than that, so I wasn't going to spend all of my, and I am not allowed to be able to spend Mike's money, and I never intend to. Um, and besides, he's on vacation, so I couldn't talk to him. I think the issue is who's going to manage and who's going to take over that piece of property. I had an opportunity to be able to travel eight miles down. Canoe Mr. Lacefield actually took me down. Uh, we spent three hours together. And I, I, I'm just astounded at uh, the, the, the value of that property that is south of Cannon Falls. Um, it is a protected area, and I think it should be treated that way. And I think you're lucky to have had somebody like Mr. Lacefield in charge of that property for all these years, and I am concerned about who it is that might take it over. 
Because if it turns out to be something like the Apple River, you're in trouble. Um, and so I would encourage you um, in an immediate kind of fashion to be able to get into the mix and to be able to participate in the discussions and the, the disposition of that property. I think that the Cannon, city of Cannon Falls should be actively involved in a partnership, if not in an ownership situation about that. You sit in a very important position. You are at the headwaters of very valuable piece of land, not only for the city of Cannon Falls, but also for Goodhue County, Dakota County, and the state of Minnesota. I think if you fail to be able to exercise leadership in regards to this stuff, I think, uh, I think that would be a shame. Um, I think the gentleman who owns the place now, I think you're lucky. I think he's, I don't know what his history is with you or with the city, but this guy's got a heart of gold from what I can tell. And he's done everything the right way over the last 30 years since he's owned that property. He needs to be able to get out of that place now because he's retiring, like I retired from my business in Edina. Um, but he's going to get money for his retirement. I didn't get any money for mine. I'm, my specialty is in addiction um, and psychiatry and uh, had to leave the practice because I was beaten to death by the insurance companies in Obamacare. Um, i got to start to wrap it up. Three minutes is up. How, how much time do I have still? You can wrap it up to right now. I'm done. <laughs> Anything finally you want to say? Sure, lots of things I want to be able to say. Just give, I'll give you a few more. Um, I think it would be, I don't think there's any time to waste in this matter. I would establish a committee and a chair immediately to work with Mr. Lacefield uh, and the attendant realtor. And uh, appreciate the opportunity to comment. Thank you very much. Yep, thank you. Okay, Mr. Gorman. Good evening. I really wasn't going to do this, but after last council meeting, As far as the brush dump, there's been a lot of blame put on tree haulers. And if you look back to about the fourth page here, it talks about there was no, this is June 21st of 2022. There was no ordinance and there were security cameras discussed. And then you, we're going to research a security camera system. If you go back to page three, excuse me, page four, it talks about that there was an ordinance, and it's very old. It's in page three, shows right here. It's got compost site, commercial haulers, even a rates. Now, it's an old ordinance, but it's still in effect. In, there were sur surveillance cameras approved in 2018. Bill Duncan, you brought it up to Mike Elthoff. It was approved, and the cameras were never put in. Why? It's been like three and a half years. Why are we going back and going over that again? And why are we denying that there's no ordinance? Doesn't anybody here know that there's an ordinance in effect for the brush dump? So for all these years, you haven't collected, and the haulers have come, and there have been rules and regulations. And Mary Jill, I loved what you said. I called you and I talked to you about it. We've let this go on far too long. If you go back, into some of the minutes of the meetings in 2020, May 5th, Steve Gesme. <clears throat> New compost site rules were discussed by the Public Works Commission, September 2020. Neil Jensen discussed inappropriate use of the compost site, noting that the Public Works Commission will be discussing this matter. So it's been going on and on for several years with your knowledge but for some reason we're in denial. Now, 
the 11th hour, well, first of all, I guess Clinton Showquist brought in a bid, it sat on a table for several weeks, publicly known, and what the bid was. So this Mr. Johnson comes from past Oatana, somewhere down there, <clears throat> that they're going to grind the wood. Their machine is half as powerful as Mr. Showquist. They're going to grind for the same amount of hours. What does that tell you? I know what it tells me. But the key is, in Mr. Johnson's, it's more or less a rate schedule. It isn't really even a bid. It doesn't talk about the time, but I have talked to Dan about it, and he's proved to me that it was the time, the 30 hours. But it says they're going to leave the undesirable logs and stumps. Well, I guess I thought it was all undesirable. I don't, I don't know if any of it's any good. And I think the key is, is that when you're done grinding this, you're still going to have all of the trees still there. Now the problem I have is when Mr. Showquist showed up down here and he went down with Dan and Neil to the brush dump, he was specifically stated to him that leaving the chips on site was not an option. So why does this Mr. Johnson from Blooming Prairie get to leave the chips? And what are we gonna do with them now? Still gonna haul them somewhere in some form or some fashion. Wrap her up. I'm done. Okay. I was trying to get my batting average up. Apparently it's pretty low according to Bill. Thanks for your time. Deemer. Tim Deemer, I've been in Cannon Falls for 31 years. I wasn't, I kind of do things kind of spur of the moment. Um, I don't, I'm not, I don't have the name behind me, I feel, and, and like, I don't know if the right word is clout or whatever. <clears throat> and um, not a polished speaker, but, but I'm, uh, I've had concerns for many years. They're, they might be shared by some, a few, many, I don't know, but nobody I have found um, over several years and all the uh, interactions and difficulties or like some like to call it problems. Um, just kind of quick side note, I, I um, I had thought of, I, I, I got three suggestions from, or asked somebody if I should do this just to show how I feel. And two out of the three said I shouldn't do it. It'd be rude, disrespectful. I agreed with them 100%, so that's why I'm not doing it. But I feel like when, I don't know if anybody else has had the experience of somebody like turning their back on you, not even listen, trying to concentrate. Other, I would probably look up and look at each one of you, look in your eyes, but it's easier for me. I'm, I'm just finding out now it's better for my, uh, to concentrate by, by saying this, but I, I would literally like to see, instead of the camera facing me, I would turn my back so that camera could face you guys in the back. Well, I did it briefly here, but I won't um, continue or, or um, can't think of the word. But yeah, that, that's the view I would like right, right here. So see, your, your ver there's verbal and nonverbal communication. There's a, a, there's a lot you can tell from nonverbal as it's been documented or studied or whatever. And, and I feel um, what I was going to speak on is something I read this, this the other day about this mission statement that actually is from our library. And I'll just finish by saying this. And, and also this other kind of interesting story, true story, happened a few weeks ago in the middle of a busy restaurant in this town. Two people out for lunch. They're sitting. Is, um, 
two co-workers, it appeared, because, you know, it's hard not to eavesdrop. So, you, you know, you're sitting 10, 50, the next table over, and this, and this one of the persons, I won't say what gender, what, uh, I won't bring up any of that, but the one said to the other, um, between you and me, and then she or the person started to, like, complain about something that happened at their office. Hearing that, when when they when somebody would say between me and me and you, just just between the two of us, and there's all these people listening in, and you could, could hear clearly what they're saying, and it, it just seemed uh, r really uh, <laughs> just I don't know confusing or, or there's a better way of saying it, but. Um, let's but wrap, just this mission, let's mission up, station let's to provide a, or, or to continuously, this is from our from Cannon Falls, continuously promote the communication of ideas, the enlighten, enlightenment of our citizens, and the enrichment of our personal lives with superior service and a welcoming atmosphere. That probably happens to most of you, most people that go in and out of the businesses and the city public form and everything, but it, it certainly doesn't happen to everyone. Like we pledge our allegiance saying, you know, liberty, f freedom, and, and, and equality, especially for, for all, not just some, but for all yep. together. Okay. Oh. Okay. Your time is up. Okay. Close the public input. Consent agenda. Consent agenda items may be adopted under one motion as presented or may be removed for discussion and resolution as council business. For you at home and in the audience, I'll go through the consent agenda. <clears throat> Item A, the just and correct claims for the accounting period ending August 11th, 2022. Item B, minute meetings for the August 2nd, 2022 council, city council meeting. Item C, second reading and adoption of an ordinance 386 and the summary of a publication, an ordinance annexing land located in Cannon Falls Township, Goodyear County, Minnesota, pursuing to Minnesota statutes 414-033, subdivision two, permitting annexation by ordinance. Item D, approve a John Deere 325G compact truck loader trade and purchase. And item E, approve a John Deere rock brush grapple attachment. Is there any of the, uh, those items the council would like to pull down? Hearing none, do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Second. Motion by Bringold, second by Gizme to approve the consent agenda. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Okay, reports. Kyle. <coughs> Good evening, City Council and community. I have some good news tonight. The citywide garage sale is set for September 16th and 17th. And if you go out to the Cannon Falls Beacon online, the registration form is there. So it gives you a whole month to get signed up. And uh, I probably get at least two calls a week wondering about the date and when it is. So people are looking forward to it. So hopefully we have a whole bunch of garage sales. That's September 15th and 16th. September 16th and 17th. Yeah, okay. Yep, Friday and Saturday. On August 27th, one of our new businesses in town is having a grand opening celebration. That is the Magnolia Animal Hospital, and they invite everyone to come down um, to help celebrate. August 27th, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. 
uh, fun-filled days of giveaways, raffles, goodie bags, and food. And I think the most important thing is the costume contest for your pets. So everyone can bring their pets all dressed up. And so I hope you can all make it down there. Um, they are asking for donations for Paws and Claws Humane Society of Rochester. So if you can bring anything to help uh, with their services, that would be wonderful. Our next open air fair is set for Thursday, September 8th from 4.30 to 7.30. Right now we have 22 vendors signed up. This is the open air fair where the vendors are on the sidewalks. <clears throat> so there will not be any streets blocked off. And so um, we do have our registration form on the table or on the website. Um, I had it on the registration table this morning, so that's why I'm checking that off there. Um, and so hopefully, right now we have 22 vendors. We don't have any food vendors. So if anyone knows any food vendors, please let me know. Um, it's always best to have some food there, beverages. I do know Lawrence Meats will be there, but we can't solely depend on them for everyone's dinner. Are there any questions? Thank you very much. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks, Absolutely. Kyle. <clears throat> okay. EDA. Anybody here from the EDA besides me? Neil, you want to take that one? Yeah, it was a pretty. It was a pretty short EDA meeting. We talked about uh, the budget, which we talked about at the work session earlier. Um, talked about some development. Um, talked about our uh, lots, remaining lots that we have out in the industrial park, and then they had a closed session uh, to discuss uh, development. And that was about it. Okay. Public Works. Oh, you weren't there. Shoot. Um, okay. Um, did we bring any of it up? Oh, we did. Uh, the things we talked about were on the John Deere compact <coughs> trade and purchase and the John Deere rock and grapple attachment we talked about tonight and approved. So... I don't know if there's anything more you wanted to add, Dan, as to what's going on. Okay. Okay. I'm on park board. Matt's not here. Dan? Uh, the most important item on the agenda that night was um, sign placement uh, by the O'Gorman rest stop um, by the Cannon Valley Trail. Just kind of a little map showing how far to Red Wing, how far to downtown. So, yeah, he just asked for the blessing to place that sign there. Okay. Very good. Library board. Actually, they didn't meet. We didn't meet this. Didn't time. meet. Nope. Planning commission. Planning commission met uh, yesterday, uh, last night. It was a short meeting, and all we did was uh, cleaned up some ordinance uh, amendment language, which you will see at our next meeting to get approval. That's it. Okay. Police commission. Laura wasn't. That's, that's got to be Derek. Derek. That's got to be Derek. <clears throat> um, we discussed um, THC edible rules. Um, haven't come to any firm um, decisions yet. We're going to be in in about a month. Keep going over it. Were there any samples? No samples. No. That's all. Okay, let's go around the horn here. Dan, what, anything tonight? Just a couple things. Uh, the last day to swim at the pool is Saturday. They'll be closed after that. Um, the river road at sewer extension is in progress. Um, slow going, a lot of rock up there, but it's coming along. And then I spoke with the uh, paint contractor for the water tower project. Things are on schedule. Um, he's hoping the first week of September things will look pretty good. So that's it. Okay, very good. 
Jeff, Neil, Laura. Well, I'll just add a little bit. I know that I was not at the police committee <clears throat> meeting, but I was briefed a little bit. But and correct me if I'm wrong, but I just there have been a lot of people asking questions about there were you know people concerned that we were trying to do the 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 stay of you know last week or last commission me or last meeting. Um, they've done a draft, um, and the idea is just to limit the ability for minors to get a hold of it. Obviously, we want to make sure that anybody trying to sell it is, you know, legitimate and doing the right thing. Um, anything that we're trying to restrict would be our children getting a hold of it and getting into the wrong hands. Did I say that accurately? <coughs> Just wanted to clarify because yeah. I know there were people concerned with restricting <coughs> the Mini Grown, mm -hmm. which is a very reputable company. Yep. That's it. Bill? Nothing. Derek? Nothing. Mary Jill? Steve? Uh, I was just going to follow up, Dan, <coughs> on that water tower. Um, you said September 1, as far as? Right around the, f the first week of September. Is that, in, are they going to be done with the ring, too, or is that, that's when they start on that, or? The ring is already on. It's already on. The new so. ring is on. Yep. The rail. Yep. <coughs> it okay I guess I don't have anything so I just want to go through a couple upcoming meetings that will happen before our next council meeting the EDA on Thursday September 1 uh, public works on Thursday September 1 and park board on Thursday September 1 those will be meetings that will come up before our next council meeting Okay, anything else? Not an entertain a motion to adjourn. So move. Second. Motion by Gesme, a second by Duncan to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. <laughs>